right, fine, you guys win. I will finally build a standing mouse for my standing keyboard. So a few months ago, I built this standing keyboard for all of those times when you don't really wanna sit down, but you also don't have a standing desk or for some reason, a box around. Now you have all the keys nicely elevated so you can work and stand and be completely productive. And for some reason, this video has popped off on my YouTube channel over the past month. So I thought it was the perfect time to add the standing mouse to the standing keyboard. And I would like to design the standing mouse to have a similar look and feel to the keyboard. So it has a nice feel that it's one big collection. Now let me just find where I put my mouse. I'm pretty sure my collection of them are over in a bucket right down here. Yeah, we got a whole collection to choose from. The company Bixing, who sent me the original mechanical keyboard and mouse that I used in my last video, also sent me a whole big collection of different mice that they make, and I just need to find the one that we wanna use. And here it is, so let's go make this thing. So the first thing I'm gonna need to do for this project is figure out the exact dimensions of the mouse that we're using. With all of the exact measurements of this mouse, I'll be able to design and 3D print a nice little bracket that the mouse is gonna slide into. And that's gonna act as the base for the standing mouse and everything else is gonna be built off of there. But I already sent it to the 3D printer and it should be coming off right now. So I wanted to design this base so that it fit and matched all of the natural curves of the mouse itself. With one of the most important parts is that the bottom is hollow. So that way the infrared light of the mouse still works on the desk when you move it around. And that is because this is where my brain is gonna start to hurt. All of the mechanisms for the standing keyboard that I built were already built inside of the keyboard. In that when I pushed the buttons up and down on the standing keyboard, that up and down mechanism was already built into the keyboard. And all I had to do was build the shafts that went on that mechanism. But for this project, it's going to be a little bit different. For the standing mouse, I'm gonna have to build some sort of mechanism up top so when I push the buttons, maybe a spring lever goes up and down and pushes these individual buttons. And then for the center scrolling wheel, I think I wanna have gears go all the way down the standing mouse. So when you scroll the top gear, all of the other ones spin round and round and round until it gets down here and that last one just barely touches the ball and spins it down. So I'm gonna have to put on my big boy, self-taught engineering 3D design skills to the test to figure out how I'm gonna put this together. So let's hop into Fusion 360 and figure that out. Except I wanna show you guys one quick thing and get your opinion. Remember how I got into tufting these rugs using that tufting gun? Here's my old frame that I had to make all of these different rugs. And here is my brand new giant six foot by four foot tufting frame. So I can pretty much make a giant area rug now. What should be the first massive rug that I tuft for the Unnecessary Studio? Leave a comment down below on some ideas of what you think I should make. And while you're there, just give this video a thumbs up. It really helps. Just do it. Let's get into Fusion 360. Okay, a big two fingers cross, hoping that this design works out. Let me show you what I put together. So right off the bat, you can see that I'm gonna go with the same color scheme that I used on the standing keyboard. The main base of the standing mouse is gonna be white, one of the buttons is gonna be blue, one's gonna be yellow, and then the gears going down the center are going to be that nice, vibrant, pinkish red. Hopefully, once we get all of the gears into the base, they have a nice tolerance. So when you spin that top gear, all of the other ones spin, and just gently roll that ball either forwards or backwards, depending on what you're trying to do. And then for each of the buttons, we're gonna have a small spring that goes in here. So once it's inside the mouse that you'll be holding onto, hopefully push the button down here, whether you wanna click the left mouse or the right mouse button. And now that we have the design, let's go hit a new 3D printer I have in the studio. The fantastic people over at Elegoo sent me another one of their Saturn 3D printers, but this time they sent it with a custom unnecessary invention sticker on it. This thing is pretty awesome if you ask me. But let's go ahead and get that file set up to print.
Okay, many hours later, and it looks like this print is a full success. Okay, let's just get this off of here. So the standing mouse is in there, but those are all of the supports that are holding the overhang areas. Let's just get this guy off of here so we can actually get it off the build plate. Nice and careful. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of these supports and clean up this guy, and hopefully the standing mouse will be looking good. It looks really good. Since making the move from the old Unnecessary Studio into this brand new studio, I haven't done a ton of resin 3D printing, and I forgot how amazing the quality is. I love the little peekaboo windows that we have here, so when we have those color rods in here for pushing the buttons, I think it's gonna look really awesome. The mouse, does it still slide in? Oh yeah, just as I wanted. So while I had this guy 3D printing, I was also printing all of the other accessories. Using the same white resin, I used a few drops of pigment to really make the color pop. Then I 3D printed out the red pieces, the blue pieces, and the yellow accessory pieces. And got them all finished up and ready for assembly. And now I'm just excited and nervous to try and put all of these pieces together and hope that it actually works out the way that I wanted to. No, is this not going to fit? I might have messed up the dimensions, and I don't know if this is going to fit, but I really, really hope it does. All right, we're going to put a little pressure on it. Maybe I'll go in through the back. Maybe I'll go in through the back. Ooh, with a little bit of love, it goes in. In, yeah, you guys get it. And we have ourselves the newest addition to the standing collection, introducing the standing mouse. Let's take a closer look. Right off the bat, I absolutely love this color combination. For some reason, all the colors being right on top of each other just feels really complimentary. And of course, it looks beautiful next to the standing desk. It's also really nice when things actually work like these buttons. They are very satisfying. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. So there's just a little spring that's built into there so it easily pushes up and down. One thing that you'll notice that's a little bit different from the earlier design is I ended up changing these gears. They ended up not quite working out so well in the other version. I'm really not sure why I made the other gears with so few teeth, but this design was definitely better. The standing mouse is an astounding 10 out of 10 on the unnecessary factor, 10 out of 10 on design, 10 out of 10 on functionality. I'm really not sure what I could add to the standing collection. I mean, they already make monitor stands. What else do you use on your desk that would help being raised up? However, if you enjoyed watching me make this completely unnecessary invention, go hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel. I make brand new unnecessary inventions every single week, so you won't want to miss it. I am going to go get all of my TPS reports done, standing up of course, but I think that's all for today. I will see you at the next unnecessary invention. See ya!